feeding people, baking things, the family business. I'm Annie, and this is Fandom Recipes. Even if you know next to nothing about Supernatural, you know that if there's one thing Dean Winchester loves, it's pie. Hey, see if they got any pie. Bring me some pie. Today, we're going back to one of Dean Winchester's first encounters with pie, all the way back to the episode Scarecrow, season one, episode 11. In the episode, John Winchester sends his boys to a small town in Indiana where couples have mysteriously disappeared during the second week of April. Long story short, the lovely inhabitants of Burkittsville, Indiana, sacrifice a couple every spring to appease the Nordic gods. In return, said gods ensure that the town prospers for another year. I don't understand. They're gonna kill us. <laughs> sacrifices, which is, I don't know, classier, I guess. In order to lure the unsuspecting couple into a false sense of security, the lovely inhabitants of Burkittsville are unpleasantly sweet, very helpful when it comes to car trouble, and they always offer the couple one of Scotty's famous apple pies on the house. And before you leave, one of our apple pies on the house. Oh my God, thank you so much. So this is what you need to make an apple pie that's frickin' worth it. Hope your apple pie is frickin' worth it! To start, we're gonna make our pie crust. Now I know it's very easy to just go to the local grocery store and buy pie crust out of the freezer section, but we all know that's cheating, and in the end, making the pie crust yourself produces stellar results. And really, it's not that hard, especially if you ditch the old-fashioned pastry cutter and go for the food processor instead. First, we're going to mix our flour, sugar, and salt in the food processor. Combine all the ingredients in the bowl and pulse a few times to mix thoroughly. One of the most important things about making pie crust is that the butter and water that you work with be very cold. That's the secret to getting flaky pie crust, cold ingredients. So we're gonna take our cubes of butter out of the refrigerator and put them into the bowl of the food processor. Then we're going to pulse until the mixture looks like a coarse meal. Finally, we're going to add the water. When it comes to water and pie crust, you want just enough to make the dough come together. You don't want it overly watery. Typically for a double crust pie, you're going for about five to six tablespoons of water. However, that can vary based on the humidity of your kitchen. What I like to do is get my ice water ready and drizzle bits of it into the food processor bowl bit by bit then pulse after each addition. Eventually, you will literally be able to see the pie dough come together as a main mass. There it goes. Once you've mixed your pie dough, you want to remove it from the bowl of the food processor and split it into two halves. Mold each half into a disc and cover them with plastic wrap. Then we set them in the fridge for a half an hour to make sure the dough cools down. Now we're gonna start on our filling. For your apples, we're gonna use Harrelson apples. I like them because it's the good ratio of sweet to tart and they hold up well when baking. I do recognize, however, that it can be difficult to find this particular kind of apple outside of autumn in the Midwest. So if you can't find these, you could use Granny Smith, Empire, or Cortland apples instead. We're gonna peel these, chop them up, and then slice them into relatively thin slices. Once your dough has cooled down, take one of the discs out of the refrigerator and roll it out onto a lightly floured surface. You want the circumference of the pie dough to be roughly one inch larger than the circumference of the pie tin. Once the dough has been rolled out, you can move it on top of the pie tin by literally rolling the dough up around your rolling pin and using the pin to transfer the dough on top of the pie plate. Once you've removed the rolling pin, you can adjust the pie dough as needed to cover the pie tin in full. And if you need to patch up a few bits, it's okay if your pie looks a little bit fugly. It's not gonna be seen under all the apple filling. Dude, you fugly. Once you've rolled out your pie dough, you wanna cover it in plastic wrap and put it back in the refrigerator to chill while we work on the filling. This is also a good time to preheat your oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Once you've chopped up your apples, you're going to add the rest of your filling ingredients. Flour, sugar, lemon juice, and spices. Now the spices are where we're going to add a bit of a Scandinavian twist to the pie. After all, we are making it in honor of Nordic gods. In addition to the usual suspects of cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, all the things you usually find in an apple pie, I'm adding a little bit of cardamom. First, because it freaking tastes good. Second, because cardamom is a very common spice used in Scandinavian baking, so it only seemed fitting to use it here. Once all of your apple slices are thoroughly coated in the rest of the filling mixture, we want to start layering them into the pie crust. We don't want to overfill it, however, otherwise the pie dough on top will not fully cover the ingredients. Once you've got your sufficient layer of apples in the pie, dot the surface with a few little cubes of butter. We're going to roll out the second disc of pie dough the same way that we rolled out the first. And we can use the same rolling pin trick to move the pie dough on top of the apple filling. Once your dough is in place, you can remove any of the scraps that are along the edge of the pie tin and then use a fork to crimp the edges of the pie closed. After that, you're gonna use a knife to poke a few nice holes in the top crust that will let any steam out that accumulates while the pie is baking in the oven. Finally, you're going to brush the top of the pie with an egg white and give it a sprinkle of sugar. To bake my pies, I like to transfer them onto cookie sheets so that it's a bit easier for me to take them in and out of the oven without mangling the crust. We're gonna bake this pie for about 40 to 45 minutes. As soon as you put it in the oven, reduce the heat from 500 to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I recommend checking on the progress of your pie by using an oven light as opposed to opening the oven and letting the heat escape. If you notice that parts of the pie are becoming brown too quickly and others are not, you can protect the browning bits of the pie by layering pieces of tin foil over them to stop the coloration process. You know your pie is ready when you can see the juice bubbling up through the slits in the top. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. The hard part comes after the pie has finished baking. If you cut into a pie that has just come out of the oven, all you end up with is a big apple mess of goo. You have to let your pie sit at room temperature for at least two hours before you can cut it. So, for the next two hours, practice your self-control as the smell of apples, cinnamon sugar, and all-butter pie crust permeates your kitchen. Or, you know, tie yourself to a tree. So what's the plan? Serve a slice of this pie with whipped cream or vanilla ice cream for extra indulgence. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you try out this pie recipe and I hope it's something that Dean Winchester would approve of. Give me a verdict. Oh yeah. This would please the Vonier. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos and leave a comment if you like to please the algorithm. Thanks again.